All right. Uh, it's already 12.30, and uh, let's start today's Brown Bag Lunch Seminar. And first of all, thank all of you for attending uh, this week's uh, Brown Bag Lunch Seminar. And uh, uh, this week, we are, it's our great pleasure to have uh, Jessica Jordan and to present. And Jessica, uh, Jessica is a six-year undergraduate student studying aerospace engineering. She spent six semesters working on undergraduate research in the Cognitive Engineering Center under the leadership of Dr. Fai. Um, and she has spent four semesters working at ATA Engineering, uh, where she has been doing finite element analysis on satellite, spacecraft, and uh, roller coasters. And I think this is what uh, she will talk about today. Okay, Jessica, your turn. Thank you, Dr. Sun. Today I'll be talking about the finite element model characterization of a regeneratively cooled nozzle. I'll begin with an introduction on finite element analysis and regeneratively cooled nozzles. Then I'll talk about the engineering mechanics of the nozzle tubes. Next I'll discuss cyclic symmetry and the truth model and finally, I'll talk about tuning the shell model using a software called Attune. Finite element analysis is a way to simulate how something will react to a load. Say we want to know the stresses generated in a chair when somebody sits on it. If we take the complex shape of a chair, there aren't equations for us to know how the load is distributed or how the chair might deform. However, we do know how to solve for these things for a tetrahedron or a cube. These shapes are called elements. To analyze the geometry, it must first be broken down into thousands of elements. This is known as a mesh of the geometry. An example of a mesh is shown here in the green. The easiest way to mesh a complex shape is to use 3D tetrahedral elements since they can be oriented to fit curves and odd shapes. Simulations using these elements can take a long time to solve if the model is large, though, since there are many degrees of freedom associated with them. Instead, for some geometry, we can use 2D shell elements to simplify the model and reduce the degrees of freedom, and thus reduce the solve time for the solution. Shell elements are assigned a thickness so for, for this example, the mass, inertia, and volume properties would not be changed from model A to model B. Regenerative cooling is when a rocket engine circulates cryogenic gases through the nozzle to prevent the hot exhaust from melting the metal. One way to do this is to build a nozzle out of hundreds of tubes and to circulate the cryogenic fuel through these tubes. Tubes are typically braced together, which is a method of welding. Today we will be discussing a nozzle composed of 200 tubes that are braced together. The nozzle concept for this demonstration case is shown here. Unfortunately, a finite element model of this geometry with 3D tetrahedral elements would be extremely large with long solve times. Because it would take so long to solve, a model this large would not be useful in an engine system dynamics model, which engine designers use to determine loads for component design. One possible solution would be to model each tube with 2D shell elements. However, even with geometry as simple as this, the model would still take a couple of hours to solve. For the component model of the nozzle to be useful, its fixed mode solution should be able to run in a matter of seconds. A way around this is to simplify the model even further and model the whole nozzle as a single sheet of 2D shell elements, which would have much less degrees of freedom. Since a tube has a different stiffness if you bend it versus if you stretch it about different axes, we will have to calculate four material stiffnesses. The stiffness 
of the tubes in the axial direction and a rough estimate of the stiffness in the circumferential direction can be calculated using beam theory. The uncertain circumferential parameters of the shell model can then be tuned to a fully detailed truth model. The truth model is used only for the development of the shell model and can be made using cyclic symmetry. Finally, tuning can be done using a tune, an ATA program which uses an optimization routine to match the shell model as closely to the truth model as possible. This section on the engineering mechanics of the nozzle tubes shows the need for different bending and membrane shell stiffnesses, as well as different directional stiffnesses. It uses equations that were taken from Rourke's formulas for stress and strain. Even though the materials used in rocket nozzles are typically isotropic, the X and Y bending and membrane properties are different for a tube. Orthotropic material cards can be used to assign these different stiffnesses to a shell element so that the thin rectangular shape behaves in the same way as a section of the tubes. To calculate the equivalent shell properties, the properties of a single tube were determined. For this nozzle, the outside edge of the cross section is similar along the axis and the tube thickness is constant. The problem was simplified by examining 10 average cross sections along the tube length, but ideally the tube properties should vary with each axial position as the geometry varies, which would require that the nozzle geometry is provided as a function of axial position. The cross section shown was used for X area and inertia calculations. The X cross section was treated as two rectangles and two hollow semicircles offset from the axis using the parallel axis theorem. My calculations for the X moment of inertia per unit length and the area of the cross section per unit length are shown. These values are normalized so that they are applicable regardless of the number of elements about the circumference of the nozzle. Finding the Y properties was more complicated and required the use of this plane strain breakout model to understand the dependence of deformation on tube geometry. A plane strain model represents a cross section of an infinitely thick solid where there is so much material on top of and below of the plane that it prevents the solid from straining in the Z direction. To see how the tubes behave in the Y membrane direction, the tubes were fixed in all six degrees of freedom on the negative Y edge, and a unit load was applied to the positive Y edge in the positive Y direction. The animation shows element strain. It can be seen from the animation that the straight, brazed tube sides are acting as rigid bodies, and the deformation is occurring primarily on the curved sides. This shows that the Y membrane properties can be estimated using curved beam equations. To solve for the Y membrane shell stiffness, the Y deformation of a curved beam experiencing a load of F over two was set equal to the deformation of a rectangular element of the same width experiencing a load F. F over two was used for the curved beam because one curved tube side provides half of the stiffness of the tube. From this equation, we can solve for the shell Y membrane elastic modulus E sub Y. When the same breakout model was subjected to a bending load, a load in the positive X direction applied to the positive Y edge, the strain was concentrated at the ends of the curved parts of the cross section. This breakout model led to the surfaces shown in cross section A being used for the calculation of the Y inertia. The resulting shape is two rectangles separated by a distance 
that is the internal diameter of the tube end. Here are my calculations for the y moment of inertia based on the breakout model behavior. This value was normalized by the height of the section so that regardless of the number of elements along the tube axis in any given section, this value will hold true. It is very important for the finite element model to not only have the same overall mass as the original geometry, but it should also have close to the same mass distribution as possible to ensure accuracy. To preserve the mass distribution of the nozzle, the shell thickness for each section was adjusted so that the mass of the shell section equaled the mass of the corresponding slice of the 3D model when the nominal material density was used. To solve for the remaining elastic moduli, the stiffness of the shell was set equal to the stiffness of the tube in each direction. Those equations are shown here at the top. Each section is defined with two orthotropic material properties, one for membrane and one for bending, to account for bending and membrane stiffnesses in both the x and y directions. Now that we have calculated the shell properties, we need something to compare our shell model to. Some models are complex enough that if a finite element model were to be made of them, it would take many hours or even over a day to solve. If the model is symmetric about an axis, cyclic symmetry can be used to get modal or static results for the full model based on just the slice. This will obtain the full model results, even results that are not cyclic symmetric. It's, this technique saves time while maintaining accuracy. The method is often used on turbines and engine components, but it could be used on anything that is axisymmetric, such as a gear, or in this case, a rocket nozzle. For a cyclic symmetry analysis, a basic sector of your geometry must first be selected. The sector angle can be any size, as long as it encompasses a repeating sector and the number of sectors times the sector angle equals 360. For the nozzle, a 3.6 degree slice containing one and two halves tubes was chosen. So for this model, there are 100 sectors. One and two halves tubes were chosen rather than one or two tubes so that the brazed area between the tubes would also be included. The cyclic symmetric analysis was done using ANSYS. ANSYS uses an eigenvector solution to get the mode shapes of the sectors, then those sector shapes are combined to give the shape of the full model. The harmonic zero breathing mode is shown on top and the harmonic one bending mode for the cyclic symmetry nozzle are shown here. The cyclic symmetry analysis is performed using harmonics, which can be seen around the circumference of the model. Harmonic zero is axial, twisting, and breathing modes. Harmonic one is bending modes, and harmonics two and above are nodal diameter modes. The first modes of Harmonics 0 through 3 of the truth model are shown here. You can see by looking at the nozzle edge that the harmonic number matches the number of lobes. Since this nozzle model was simple enough that a finite element model of the full geometry could solve in just a couple of hours, a second truth model was made to demonstrate the accuracy of the cyclic symmetry method. The element size and the mesh characteristics between the two truth models are identical. The models use the same fixed translation boundary condition, and 20 fixed modes were requested for each. We can see that the cyclic symmetric model is a good representation of the detailed model, since all of the first 20 modal frequencies 
have less than a 6% error, and most have less than 2.5% error. The maximum modal frequency difference is only 4 Hz, and the minimum difference is as low as 0.2 Hz. The two models also exhibit the same mode shapes for the first 20 modes. The first three mode shapes are shown, with the cyclic symmetry model on top and the detailed truth model on the bottom. Now that we have both the shell and the truth model, we can see how accurate the initial calculations were. The Y direction properties were only an estimate, so the accuracy can be improved by tuning the properties of the shell model. When the shell model is compared to the truth model, the shell model exhibits most of the right mode shapes, but at the wrong frequencies. Although some of the modes are within 1% difference for frequency, others have over 50% difference. The shape behavior is close, but the shell stiffnesses still need to be adjusted. A tune is an optimization tool developed by ATA engineers to adjust finite element model frequencies and mode shapes to physical test results. In this case, it was used to tune the shell model to the detailed truth model. The X and Y bending and membrane moduli were set as design variables and the shear moduli were adjusted proportionally. A genetic algorithm and a gradient-based algorithm were used to tune these design variables so that the shell model mode shapes and frequencies would match that of the truth model. The cross-orthogonality plot shows that the mode shapes were already accurate and only the frequencies needed to be tuned. Several iter iterations of the optimization process were run in a tune until it converged on a solution. Although there is still an RMS error of over 7%, this is not bad since all finite element analyses are just approximations of reality. However, more accuracy could be achieved by breaking the model into more than 10 segments for the calculation of equivalent shell properties. The final shell model's mode shapes all match the truth model. The greatest percent difference in frequency is 18% for modes 3 and 4, but that is only a difference of 6 Hz. The modal frequencies of the shell model are all within 15 Hz of the truth model frequency for the same mode shape. This shell model can be used in a system loads model, and its results can be considered fairly accurate. In summary, a detailed model of a regeneratively cooled nozzle is too large to be included in an assembly, but it can be simplified by instead building a 2D shell model. Engineering mechanics can be used to obtain the approximate behavior of the nozzle. When the geometry is complex, cyclic symmetry can be used to build an accurate truth model much more quickly. The shell model material properties can then be tuned to match its mode shapes and frequencies to that of the truth model. The resulting shell model can be treated as fairly accurate in an engine loads model and will solve in seconds. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, uh, the floor is open to questions. Any questions from the audience? Uh, I will ask a question first, Jessica. Um, so in your simulation, um, uh, is, your, is one of your conclusions saying the heat transfer effect is uh, too complicated to be included? The heat transfer effect? Yes. Um, okay, so I didn't investigate um, heat transfer, but I believe that thermal analyses would still be um, you could still use the model for thermal analyses. Uh, 
All right. Um, any other questions for Jessica? Okay, so it seems like uh, there are no more questions from the audience. Okay, thank you very much, Jessica. Thank you.